Okay. We're just talking about the 24 elders. But there are 12 apostles. And I believe the prophets that are mentioned in Ephesians 2 are representative of 12 from the Old Testament. Now, when we get to chapter 7, you will see that there are 12 tribes and that 12,000 of those 12 tribes were sealed. Also, you can look at the description there in Revelation 21 of that holy city. Uh, it tells us it's the holy city. When you look at Revelation 21, on verse 9, it says, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And in verse 10, it says, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So New Jerusalem or Holy Jerusalem is the Lamb's wife. We know that the bride of Christ is the church and it is the body of Christ. We can read that in Ephesians chapter 1. The last verses talk about those things. But in the description of that city, in Revelation 21, in verse 12, it says, And had a, a wall, great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. And then uh, in verse 14, And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of 12 apostles of the Lamb. To me, those 12 and 12 are symbolic of the Old Testament and the New Testament being partakers of that city. And they will be round about the throne. I want you to remember also, to me, those 24 are representative uh, it calls them elders and those are the ones that are um, highly esteemed just like even though Jesus picked out 12 apostles there were three of those apostles that were very close to him they were always with him when he went to pray he was with them he took them everywhere he went that was Peter James and John. So out of the 12, he had an inner circle of those three. And to me, those, those elders are representative of that inner, inner circle. I think, I, I think it's past. It's just well, okay. Thank you though. I, it's just like an attack. Why 24? We talked about 12, 12 apostles, 12 tribes of Israel. 12 times 12 is 144, and the thousand is a multitude. And I can see that in um, chapter 5, where it talks about the number of uh, angels. Look over there in Revelation 5. It says, uh, verse 11, And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels. Do you, many angels, just in your mind think, lots of angels, round about the throne and the beast and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. I counted all those zeros and the number that I came up with was 100 trillion. You cannot, I cannot number that. I know computers can, but I can't. And I don't think anybody else can either. And besides that, I can look at chapter seven and verse nine. It says, after this I beheld and lo a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, 
clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Do you see that? They're, this is a huge city. It's not just a small town. It's, it's really, really big. And I do believe that everybody there, because we have seen the white raiment, clothed in white raiment, numerous times, numerous times. I, we just finished Revelation 3, and in that verse it says, uh, in verse 5, He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I look down at verse 18, Revelation 3, 18. He says, And white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear. So the righteous are clothed in white robes, and that represents the righteousness, the righteousness that the Lord has granted to us. And thank God for that. And crowns of gold. We talked about this last week, uh, that they had crowns. Revelation 4.4, 4, it, it says, Clothed in white raiment, and they had on their head, heads crowns of gold. So we've talked about those things. We look down at uh, verse 10, it says, And cast their crowns before the throne. So I do believe that those people are going to be wearing those golden crowns. That they're seeing them, that's been talked about. It's been promised to the overcomers. Uh, Revelation 3.11, hold fast that no man take your crown. Revelation 2.10, I will give thee a crown of life. Amen. That is a promise. That will take place. And then when we look at verse 5, Revelation 4.5, it says, And out of the throne proceeded lightnings, and thunderings and voices and there were seven lamps so i want to focus on the lightning thunderings and voices so i look at revelation 8 chapter 8 and verse 5 it says and the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth, and there were voices, and thunderings, and lightnings, and an earthquake. That's what Revelation 8 and 5 says. And then I look across, and I see uh, chapter 10. I'm looking at chapter 10. It says, and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now, those, it, it tells us that those seven thunders uttered their voices in verse 4. But he was told not to write those things down. He said, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. Okay, now I'm going to check. Going a little bit farther into Revelation 16. And I'm going to look at verse 18. It says, And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. I want to also look over into Ezekiel chapter 1 because that passage in Ezekiel, Ezekiel saw a lot of the things that John wrote about. And in Ezekiel, the first chapter, verse 13 and 14, it says, As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth 
lightning. And verse 14, and the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. That sheds a little light on that, doesn't it? It does to me. And, and verse 20 of uh, that same chapter in Ezekiel 1, it says, Whithersoever the Spirit was to go, they went. Thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. I, I just, it's wherever the spirit goes, when that's really talking about the beast, but we haven't got that far. That comes in the next verse. The other part about this revelation 4, 5 is that there are seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. So seven lamps, it tells us very plainly there that these are the seven spirits of God. I see this in Revelation chapter 5. As I look at verse 6, Revelation 5, 6, It says, the seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. I want to read you the whole verse of Revelation 5, 6. It says, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Now see, here's the throne. Talks about right in the midst of the throne. There's the four beasts. We haven't talked about them yet, but we will when time permits. And in the midst of the elders, we're talking about the 24 elders. It says, uh, stood a lamb. Do you know that Jesus is the lamb of God? And it says, as it had been slain, Jesus was crucified for us. And we've just passed um, what we call Holy Week, where we think about and remember the Passover, that when Jesus was crucified, that he is our Passover lamb that was slain for us, that he takes away the sins of the world, and that on the first day of the week, resurrection he rose from the dead that those those are wonderful things just to keep that in your mind that this life that we're living now is not the end there is life eternal because he lives we live too yes thank you jesus uh, it says here um having seven horns horns as we get in a little bit farther and talk about the beast the dragon, yes. The horns represent that power and authority. Right. And don't leave out dominion because right. we are uh, talking about, when you talk about the enemy, that beast, he has a kingdom of darkness. Right. He has a certain amount of, of power that has been given to him. Mm -hmm. A lot of them. Yes, yes. So, and... Seven is the number of completeness, and that re represents all power and authority. Jesus said those very words. He said, all power and authority has been given unto me. Jesus has that power. And then it says, and seven eyes which are sent forth. It says seven eyes. Seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. Seven is the number for completeness. Again, it hasn't changed. Just when you think of that number seven, uh, the eyes represent your wisdom, your understanding, and your knowledge. Yes. And, and that, the seven eyes, which are the seven spirits, they're not seven spirits of God. We're just talking about the complete spirit of God. Complete. God
God is everywhere. You could say, well, here's the man, Jesus. You know, I can only be one place at a time. But God, God is omnipresent. He has that ability to be everywhere at all times, that he has all understanding, all knowledge, past, present, and future. And he has all authority. There's none greater than he. He is the only one. He's the Almighty. Okay, so are we all in one accord there? Yes, it's very wonderful. It, it certainly is. As I look at Revelation 4, and I see the next verse, it says, And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. I want to talk about the sea of glass because that comes first. So let's look at Revelation 15 and verse 2. 15 and 2, it says, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. Do you see that? And now I want to go over into Revelation 21 because that gives us, you know, the throne is in the midst of that city, that new Jerusalem, that holy city. Holy Jerusalem, as it's described in, in Revelation 21, 10. Um, I'm in chapter 21, and I want to look at verse 18. It says, And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. That sea is, is referred to of the likeness of clear glass. And look down at verse 21, Revelation 21, 21, it says, And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. That several is individual gates, one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. You, you hear the streets of gold. You hear... Uh, that, that that gold is so polished, I would have to say. I, I don't know of any other descriptive words, that it, it appears as transparent glass. Pretty amazing, yeah. isn't it? Pure. Pure, yes. I've never seen anything like that. You, you know, we've seen... Our gold, what we think of as gold, but you know, it's none of it's pure gold. The, what, what we have, it's mixed with something else. Okay, now it talks about here before the throne, it, in Revelation 4, 6, it says, Round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. I want to I, I want to read the rest of this description and then we'll talk about those beasts, okay? I, it says the first beast was like a lion and the second beast was like a calf and the third beast had a face as a man and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. I'm going to read you out of Ezekiel 1 here pretty quick, but I want you to see the rest of uh, verse 8. It says, And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Now, you see in verse 6, it says, there were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. We see it repeated again at, in verse 8. They 
were full of eyes within. And so I want to go over, well, two places. You know, mostly when the angels appeared to individuals throughout the Bible, it doesn't give any ex extraordinary appearance that they are like the appearance of a man. And, and, and that would be uh, like what Daniel saw or what Mary saw or like they look like individuals only yet in their brightness of apparel. Sometimes they're much bigger, larger, taller, um, awesome in appearance. But I want to look at, at Isaiah chapter 6 first. I'm going to Isaiah 6 because when we read in, in Revelation 4, these angels that are um, described as these are um, with six wings. And they say the same thing that we see in Isaiah 6. Isaiah had a vision of the throne room there. At the, verse 1, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. I, as I read to you in Revelation 4, those angelic beings that are called beasts there have six wings. With twain, it says in Isaiah 6, 2, with twain, that's two, he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. That word twain is meaning two. And verse 3, one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. So, um, it, it, the verse 6 says, Then flew one of the seraphims unto the unto me having a live coal in his hand which he had taken off the with tongs off the altar and he laid it upon my mouth he purged him and um but i i just wanted you to see that description in isaiah 6 it calls these angelic beings seraphims seraphims in um ezekiel there in the first chapter are called living creatures. Living creatures. I see that. Um, verse 13, it, it says, uh, the appearance of the living creatures. I want you to look at verse 10. Ezekiel 1.10. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man, the face of a lion on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox and on, on the left side, and they four also had the face of an eagle. Now, when we read Revelation 4, we saw he's, what he saw was a uh, first one like lion, the next one like a calf, the next one like a man, and the fourth was like a flying eagle. In my mind, he has seen those four with their faces pointed in a different direction. That's why he saw four different faces. Now, Ezekiel says those four had four different faces, four different faces. And here's the thing. It, those in Ezekiel 1 only have four wings. He says in verse 6, everyone had four faces, everyone had four wings. So I would have to say that these are different from the seraphims. And I want you to know that seraphims means burning. Burning. Yeah, like you said, like fiery burning, like serpent and copper and stuff is what it explained it over there. Okay. Look up cherubim. Do you, see, in my, I have a Bible dictionary at, at the back of my book, 
and it tells me that cherubim are um, the de definition is terrible. When I I use the com computer to tell me what was the definition, it wouldn't give one. So what do you come up with? Well, in the Old Testament, it says uh, of an uncertain derivation, a cherub or imaginary figure, plural cherub, an angelic being as gardens of Eden, guardians of Eden, as flanking God's throne, as an image from hovering over the Ark of the Covenant, as the chariot of Jehovah. You know, like the wind just went up. She said, and so you have gardens that would be terrible, you know. It, she, it, terrible meaning like fearful. Fierce. Yes, yeah. fierce. Because in, that's in Genesis 3 at the very last. It says that they, those cherubim have flaming swords that go every which way to keep the way of the tree of life. So you might say that those cherubim are uh, defenders defenders of and they're also the carriers because as you read the description in, in ezekiel 1 um, that they have wheels and and they're like the throne bearer wherever the spirit wants to go they go with it right now that makes you kind of think well he's either here or there but just remember this what the spirit of the lord is he's everywhere He's everywhere. Um, and we've run out of time here, so I want to continue this this next week, if that's okay. Would that be okay? Yeah. Sister Ada, why don't you close us tonight in prayer? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for what we've heard. We thank you, Lord, that you're opening up our understanding, Lord. And God, we just feel limited in our understanding. We want to keep reading. And reading until we digest and really understand it. Thank you, God, for Sister Linda and George for the time they give and in, in studying and prayer and to bring this to us, Lord. I ask you to bless them abundantly. I read in Second Corinthians three where the ministry is a wonderful thing. It is glorious, and I just thank you, Lord, that we each one have this opportunity to share the gospel, to share the good news, and. Help us to be wise servants, God, and, and to win souls. We just ask you to bless this church. Bless all that hear this, God, and open their understanding. We ask you to bring us back safe in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.